get to it so you can get back to work. Um, well, first of all, how do you feel about how the hearing went? You know, that, uh, that hearing went well, in my opinion. We had some congressmen, um, you know, Fleming and Sutherland that mm. were really, uh, I wouldn't say on our side, but, um, you know, were very interested in our plight and what, uh, what we had to say. Yeah. And, you know, they, they found H.R. 511 to be just nonsensical when you look at the overall, you know, things that are happening in this country with the deficit and, and some of the other issues we have. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, th I think uh, I think Sutherland is my new favorite congressman. He just kind of oozed of common sense. Yeah, he was funny. He was, um, you know, when he brought up the point when you know, the National Wildlife Federation and Jenkins, you know, who represent a bunch of, of people supposedly, like Defenders of Wildlife, brought up the 17 deaths, 17 deaths from constrictors in the history of this country, um, you know, and they started to beat on this, and, and you know, it's just, just, just absurd, but we know why they do it, um, you know, and then he brought up the 200 deaths from deer strikes in yeah. Washington State, um, you know, I, I put that team right then and there. Yeah, yeah, really, that, that's, uh, I, I mean... <laughs> It, it, it just, I don't think anybody can argue with, uh, I, I mean, it's a little, it's slightly a different topic, but, but made perfect sense to, uh, everybody that heard, I believe. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's what it comes down to is common sense. Now on, as far as how the hearing went, are you kind of leaning one way or the other on the outcome of it all? Do you think it's going to go in our favor or, or not? Yeah. I mean, you know, with regard to Sutherland, um, and, and, you know, the hearing, the people who put this H.R. 511 in motion, which was Rooney and Nelson, had, you know, a lot to do with these these hearings and these these uh, bills and that. They, it, it's based on fear mongering. Yeah. And they get people all jacked up because they know that a lot of people are afraid of snakes and they totally excise any logic or reason out of it. And what, you know, Fleming and Sutherland did was put it back in and say, look. You know, though we we um, we feel for those seventeen families, really, seventeen families when you have how many people dying from car accidents and dog bites and falling off their own bar stools, and you know, it, it's just nonsensical to try to bring that kind of thing in there. And that's that you know that was really telling those seventeen deaths when they brought that in and started to try to beat that drum. That that's exactly what they're doing because as bad as 17 deaths are, really since 1978, 17 deaths. That's a pre pretty good odds, if you ask me. Yeah, that that's just absurd. I, I think more people die on a golf course than that every year. Well, in the time we've been talking, way more than that have died in car accidents. Exactly, that's true. Not in cars. Yeah, yeah. Now, during the hearing, you mentioned the. Uh, the options people in Florida have for for getting rid of pets that may get too big or, or aren't wanted anymore, and I, I I've always thought it, as long as I've been dealing with reptiles that this was such a a big important issue for people to have those options available to them. Um, can you go over those again really quick, just uh, so everybody knows what at least the options in Florida are? Yeah, the biggest one is. You know, we worked hard to put together this 24-7 amnesty program. They, the state of Florida, um, Florida Wildlife Commission, had put together um, these amnesty days at different zoos and facilities. Um, but they would maybe happen six times a year. And, you know, we, we went to several of them, and I, I sat and I watched as people would drive through the parking lot, and they'd see all the FWC uniforms and, you know, and you'd see them just, you know, haul ass and drive away. Yeah. So we convinced them that, look, people people think this is a setup. They're, you know, they're scared that they're going to be arrested or fined, you know. So let's make these 24-7 amnesty sites, like my facility and other people that have the facility. They have the knowledge. Um, you know, they're responsible people. They have the permits and can take them in, no questions asked, so that if you need to get rid of an animal... 
um, that you can no longer afford or can no longer take care of or whatever. You lost your job, you're moving, whatever it is. Someone can call me, show up on my animal, and that's it. Yeah. No questions. Now, now, what do you do? You, do you adopt these animals out, or do you keep them, or what do you do with them once you get them? It depends on what it is. Um, you know, a lot of times they stay right here, um, but uh, you know, sometimes I I will you know rehome them, relocate them to to another facility um, that uh, maybe you know that's exactly what they they do is is uh, rescue large constrictors or something. It just depends on the species. Okay. Okay. Now, now here's the toughest question for you, and but again, equally as important, um, what people can do uh, to, to both help the fight against this as well as prevent it to happening in the future. And I mean, the one obvious answer is to support U.S. Arc, them being on the front lines of uh, trying to to save this hobby as far as large constrictors go. But what about the people that are? I cannot tell you. How many, I mean, just on the social networks in the last couple of days, how many people I've seen uh, speak out against U.S. ARC, which is kind of amazing. I, I mean, I personally was pretty impressed with, um, especially this last hearing, but what about the people that choose not to support them? What can they do? You know, there are a lot of, a lot of avenues that people can do, and I don't think that they really um, give them enough, uh, enough consideration. And, you know, I see these petitions floating around a lot, but the reality is a petition doesn't hold a lot of weight. Um, it's an avenue that, that can be explored, but if you really want to wake up your senators, you want to wake up your congressmen, um, you make phone calls into their offices. You can send emails, but phone calls and mailed-in letters hold a lot of weight. If you light up their switchboard, constant and you know let's be honest there are tens of thousands of us in the united states if we lit these people's phones up all of the time they'd be a little more hesitant to go out on a limb and put these bills forward yeah yeah well there's no, no doubt a phone call is a lot more personable and harder to ignore than uh than an email and especially a petition i mean a petition's only going to be good if somebody in a in a position of power cares and actually looks at that petition. Um, I, I, other than that, I mean, if they're not even going to look at it, I, I don't see what good it does other than making the signer feel better, maybe. Right. And, you know, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they get a lot of recognition, but the reality is petitions aren't the best avenue. Mm. The best avenue, really, phone calls. Phone calls. If you can call them and just bog them down in phone calls and, you know, respectfully, Put your opinion out there um, and let them know that you are a registered voter. Um, you know, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, that, I mean, that's that's all I got. Do you have anything you want to add? No, you know, I just I just got to say that, you know, the hearing went well. Um, you know, it was very, very happy with the outcome and the overall kind of feel during the hearing. Um, you know, I had fun doing it. I, I uh I guess that's kind of what I do. I don't mind getting up there and telling the truth, um, you know, and, and burning hard topics is fun for me. I like to see the look of pain on some of the, the congressmen. Uh, I oppose it. Um, but, uh, you know, people got to get more involved. Mm -hmm. I have these conversations all the time on Facebook or on phone or, or sitting around having a beer is we are a huge group of people. And yet we, we are like herding cats. Yeah. Yeah. And that needs to stop. We need to, you know, if we've got our differences, let's settle them, you know, behind closed doors. Uh, you know, but unfortunately, we love to put it up there, right? We love to throw it up on uh, on social media for the world to see. Yeah. And um, we, we've got to get more organized. We've got to get more solidified. And we've got to act in concert. I'm not saying you got to like everybody. Um, you know, hard to like, I don't know, you know, <laughs> but it's not about that. It's about a common shared goal, and that is to continue to be able to keep these animals that we know we want to conserve, pass it on to the next generation so that they can be responsible pet owners and keepers of these magnificent animals. All of the personal stuff needs to go away. Well, there it is. I, I don't think you can say it much better than that.